right, guys. Guess where we are? <laughs> Home. <laughs> yeah. Yay. So happy to be back. Finally returned. Yeah. Yeah, everything's all overgrown and unkempt. We were gone for a month. Yeah. So it's a lot longer than we anticipated. Yeah. Lawn's overgrown. The bushes in the driveway are all overgrown. Looks like. Half the garden got destroyed by slugs. Yeah, it's not too good looking down there. The other half never got planted. <laughs> yeah. As usual, not enough time, but Next we tried. <laughs> yeah, we got home last uh, night. Well, actually early afternoon, huh? Like around five. Yeah. As you can see, I uh, have a couple batteries here and a jumper cable. Both our vehicles' batteries were dead when we were going to pick up pizza. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I had to jump start them that way but. yeah it's good to be home we can start to kind of recoup and get caught up on some things and and boats to work on indeed so, I, think I we guess got our work cut out for us lots to do <laughs> yeah start getting our list together on to do so I guess for now we're gonna go downtown do a little errand running and yeah, I guess uh, we'll pick you guys back up after a while. So we're back down here on a new boat. Just kind of winded down at home, got things together. <laughs> yep, <laughs> working on paperwork. Yeah. A lot of that. Lots of that to catch up on. New stuff to start getting going on. So due to the labor shortage in Kodiak and <clears throat> most everywhere on the planet, uh, we're definitely running into problems with custom processing right now. So that was one of the reasons behind getting this boat and I guess this boat in particular is it was already set up to freeze on. So we're starting to work on paperwork to get set up as a ketchup processor so we can process our own catch on board. At least in some limited capacity and keep us busy why we don't have other opportunities to have our guys that at the plant cut fish for us. So that's one thing that we've been working on at home. Um, the process is, isn't really that bad. The paperwork's not overwhelming. There are some hoops you gotta jump through. Um, we need to get some measurements on deck, get our processing layout kind of uh, worked out. So we can make some sketches, some drawings, submit those to DEC, which is a regulatory body for all of our processing facilities and also vessels. And um, other than that, it's just some some paperwork to do and at some point have them come down and inspect the vessels. So we'll kind of go through that as we work along through it and bring you guys along for the journey on that. In the meantime, we're just going to start kind of getting some of the little stuff done around here things that need some immediate attention, things that we identified on the ride home, so. We started a list, so. Yeah. We'll just keep populating it as we think of stuff and realize stuff and. Yep. The list keeps growing, that's how they usually go. <clears throat> we have a new boat, so. Uh, the mass was moving around a little bit, not enough, or not enough to make it dangerous, but definitely needs to be tightened up so the stay lines that come down on each side need to be cinched down and even the forward one too. Mm -hmm. Turn buckle on that that needs to be tightened up so that's kind of some of the immediate things we're going to start with. At some point we'll get next to the dock over here and we can lay our stabilizer poles down. We're going to shorten them up a little bit. We don't need all that length on there. We don't use it in a trolling capacity, so there's, we're not running lines out to the ends. All we need is our stabilizer fish. Yeah, I think there's probably a good 15 extra feet of pole there yeah. by the looks of it. And I'm not even sure if we're going to put those stabilizer fish where they're set right now. Mm -hmm. might come down even less than that. Yeah, they're pretty far out there. Yeah, <clears throat> so we just got to kind of take a look at that, play that one by ear. But we need to get on the end of the dock like we did with the fishtail when we replace the rigging on it. And then we can disconnect the highest fixed stays and be able to lay it all the way down onto the dock. And then we can do some trimming. 
but until we get assigned to our spot over here, um, that's not going to happen yet. I guess we could go over the water dock, but I kind of hate to go over there. I'd rather be over here. Yeah. Because then we're not in anybody's way. Yeah, not in a big hurry. Yeah, or in a big hurry, so. so. Yeah. Anyway. Lots to do. Lots to do. That's just about uh, one tenth of one percent <laughs> of what needs to be done, so. Yeah. And you gotta put fishing in there somewhere too. <laughs> People asking when we're gonna start fishing her, and the answer to that is when she's ready. <laughs> yeah, so that's a good question. Um, like I say, we've got um, labor shortages at the processors, and it's pretty much happening everywhere. Um, Kodiak's not immune to that. So right now we're really on hold. We don't want to bring a load in and have them not be able to do it or not do it in a timely manner. So that's a big concern. Um, we do have a fresh market that we'll probably resuscitate here. I'm sure that... He will be very happy. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be very happy to get some fish. And so that's something that we can at least do on a limited basis right now. And uh, we'll just take the fishtail on for that. Just went over there a little while ago and got fired up. We had a little issue with the starter. And we'll kind of take you through that and, and show you what we did to fix it. We a pretty simple problem. So uh, that was actually from the last trip that we did about a month and a half back. We went on vacation slash boat shopping and just didn't get to it. So when we got back the other day, we took a look at it and identified the problem and fixed it. So we'll show you what was going on there. And so really, it's ready to go. Yeah, fishtail is pretty solid. Like there, were, there is no no other issues other than that. So no, nope. just take ice go. and warm her up and go. Last yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. So. So that's one good thing is that we have that fresh market we can fall back on. And uh, in the meantime, we'll just keep working and getting this one going towards being a, a catcher processor. That's probably our best option right now, really. Yeah, and not too many big hurdles to overcome, like you say. Yeah. Just and I think as, uh, as we get towards the beginning of September, it sounds like things will probably start slowing down at the uh, at our custom process. So right now he's focusing on sport fishing. Um, he's always had that clientele way before we came into the picture. So he's obligated to, to serve those guys before us, which is totally fair and understandable. So once, uh, once things start slowing down for those guys, then they can start taking some loads from us. It'll be back to business. Yep. It'll all work out good. Yeah. Looks like mom's gonna make us some yummy breakfast slash lunch. Yep. Didn't eat today, so it's nice and comfortable to cook down here. Yeah. Do you want that stove fired up again? I was gonna fire it up, yeah. yeah I'll go plug in that fuse. Nice. So I think I put it on top of the rake work. Yeah, okay. I guess we gotta find a good place for that so it doesn't roll away and get lost. Yeah, and what else do we got going on here? Um, autopilot worked good, except on one heading, basically south. Um, it's having a hard time getting it calibrated. We weren't exactly doing it right, so hopefully, fingers crossed, when we try to manually calibrate it again, it'll be okay. Um, steered great every every other direction, but there's this one spot where it, it kind of, if it runs over too far, the heading is off is what's going on and it, it'll spin at like 100 degrees. And then of course it just takes you off in some weird direction. So that was a little bit annoying, but thankfully the majority of our trip that wasn't affected. Mm -hmm. And we were able just to go off course a little bit and then turn back the other way after a few hours. So we got to look into that. Um, we got a couple of things to unbox. We do. Yeah. Some new equipment. Mm -hmm. So we'll show you the show you guys that, I guess, if you want. Yeah, here in a while now. Yeah. Do it in here. Eat yep. some breakfast and... Yep. Open some presents. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 
I guess we'll uh, get to work here. All right, so what we got here, Dad? Got some presents for the boat. So, have a new distribution panel. Some blue seas. Not endorsed, by the way. Nope. <laughs> we just make a good product, so. That's what we're using. I just made my own panel on the fishtail, but it takes time. This one actually has a, a voltmeter and amp meter on it too, which is pretty nice. And it's a little bit bigger. I did use Blue Sea uh, breakers on there though. So these are circuit breaker switches, which is really nice. Do double duty on it. So yeah, it's got a. This is a DC panel. Got a voltmeter and uh, DC amp meters. Comes with the shunt for the amp meter. And uh, DC main, 100 amp, and then your different switches. Um, we have enough new ones to fill the rest of these that we picked up when we were in Juno, just to get us home. So that was kind of the plan there. So we gotta figure out where we're gonna put this. Not exactly sure yet, somewhere in I'm thinking I'm probably going to move these engine gauges and either put them up on the dash or maybe right over here where it's a little easier to see them. Or I like that stuff where it's facing me and I can see it straight on. Um, over here you're always looking at everything at an angle. It's kind of hard to see the water camp and, and the oil pressure so I might put it up on the dash there. These are just mechanical gauges anyways, so it's easy to move them. The sand meter is busted anyways. And so if I do that, most likely this will just go right there. It's up high enough where your hips aren't going to hit it. Turn switches off. I might recess it in a little bit. My other thought is right here, but got your steering lines right here if they ever leak. It's well, you're gonna really blast it. At least over here, it wouldn't be as bad, probably. But most likely, I'll kind of recess this panel a bit like that. But I think right here is probably gonna be the best place for it. I think that'd be a good spot. It's kind of up out of the way. If we recess it a bit, then there's almost no way that you can bump these switches. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. So these are real nice, um, they have LED lights to indicate when they're on and then uh, right here is where your name tag goes and there's also an LED there which backlights it so you can see it at night. It's a, it's a nice design, it's a well thought out product, these guys did a good job building it. Um, it's got your positive bus bar and your negative bus bars all in one, so one of each. They already have them jumpered together. So yeah, it's a, a good product. Um, see, I take that back. These are both negative plus bars. Huh? And then we do the positive rails. I have to look at it a little closer. So that's one nice uh, upgrade. It's heavy, huh? Yeah, it's got a little weight to it. I put that box on our bunk. What's this? Cheers. Alright, what else do we have out here? What else? Other thing I'm also very excited about. This is a set of controls. 
MMC for Micro Commanders from ZF. Once again, not affiliated or endorsed. Um, we have these on the fishtail. Came with the boat, had them on there for 22 years. Never had a problem with them to speak of. So, um, same basic controls. These are actually interchangeable with the ones that we have on our other boat. It's an integrated uh, shift and throttle. So first detent is just into gear, forward or neutral, and then throttle. Back again to the first detent, which is idle, and then neutral. Same thing in the back position. Got a button here that you can use to override the, the shift, override the transmission. Then you can idle it up if you need to. You need to speed up your hydraulics or just idling up your engine when you're warming it up. Really simple, just plug and play pretty much. Pretty bulletproof. They've been good to us. I can't complain about them. Um, big old pile of wire. This is multi-conductor and that goes to the controller heads right here. Lots of that. So you can put, I think, I don't know how many of these you can put. Uh, I think at least four with the C unit. Uh -huh. So you can have four different control stations on your boat. So it's nice, we can put one behind the store for when we're hauling gear, like crab gear or seining. You want it to up forward, the steering helm. So we have three of them with this. Uh, just some main wire for the power in. These are just more control stations. And Brain brain. The brains behind it all. So this is just a box. It's just a box. So this mounts somewhere either in your engine room or outside of it. And then there's a couple of holes right here where Morse cables will go in. There's two screw motors in here that are actuated by your control heads. And depending on which way you tell it to go, it screws them in or it screws it out, which uh, actuates your Morse cable and shifts your vessel into gear, into neutral, and reverse, and also controls the throttle the same way. Is it the brain then? This is the brain. Yeah. Yep, that's, that's the brain of it all. Funny, this is the exact same size box as ours no on change. the fish tail, so I'm thinking not much has changed all these years. Other than this one has a little panel. It's like some LEDs in there. Yeah, I see some LED numbers. Mm -hmm. Or LCD. LCD. Liquid crystal. like all the info on here. Interesting. Yeah. So oh, there's the screwdrivers. Right I can you see them in there. Yep. So yeah, just a little motor in there. Goes into like a gearbox or something. That rotates those screws back and forth. Boy, once you get that hooked up, you're gonna be styling. Yeah, this is gonna be nice. Um, the system that's on it right now is functional and it works, but 
I'm just going to say it's kind of archaic, and it is. And it already gave us problems on the ride up. You guys will see some of that, I'm sure. So that's one reason to, to switch it out. We've had good luck with these, so hopefully this is uh, the same as the others. Yeah. No reason to doubt it, right? Yeah. So it looks like four station, five station. These also have an interlock on them too if you want to hook it up, which basically means that you can't, uh, if it's in gear, it won't let you start the vessel. But you have to hook it into your ignition, of course. Yeah, so there we have it. That's our, our little upgrades for now. have to figure out where we're going to mount this, go find some Morse cable for it. Let's see if we have any info on the shelf. I'm not sure if we sold those or not. So we'll find out. It's nice to use them. Those came from with the skiff, I guess, huh? They're too long. Yeah. Or it came with the outboard. Yeah, I'm going to do a little reading up on this thing.